Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to your Friday edition of Wasatch Weekends. We love getting to be here to bring you some great community information. I'm your host, Maddie Evans, and we've got a great show ahead of us. Not only are we going to be talking about the Utah Queer Film Festival that you're not going to want to miss out on, but we're also going to introduce you to a great celebrity chef on some backyard barbecue tips and what you could be doing this summer, as well as a great blogger who's got an incredible blog on some parenting tips to get you through the summertime with those little ones at home. But first, let's take a look at that local weather forecast. mark your calendars as the Utah Queer Film Festival is right around the corner and it's going to be something that is absolutely exciting to be a part of. Julio had the chance to talk with one of their great team members. Let's hear what they have to say. Ladies and gentlemen, the Utah Film Center recently announced its film lineup for the 2024 Utah Queer Film Festival, which is happening later this fall in October. And to give us a little bit about uh, the inside scoop and what we can expect for this year, we have um, Film Festival Director uh, Kat Palmer joining us to um, talk to us and share a little bit about this exciting event. Kat, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to chat with you about the Utah Queer Film Festival coming up this fall. You all just announced the lineup and some of the films, but um, I kind of want to get, um, get uh, talking to you and kind of pick your brain out everything that's happening this fall because the festival is coming up October 25th through the 27th, right? Um, it was previously known as the um, These Heels, uh, Damn These Heels, sorry, festival. Um, you guys kind of have um, transitioned and, and changed the name. So tell me a little bit about what we can expect for this year. Well, I'm really excited for this lineup. I'm excited. We've had a really diverse programming committee who has spent hours selecting, sifting through hundreds of films. And I'm really excited. We have um, House is Not a Disco opening and kicking off our um, film festival this yeah. year. And our theme is Halloween because we're right before you know, Halloween. Halloween yeah. and so we're really excited for that. And House, House is Not a Disco is it's, it's a really cool because Fire Islands, you know, has been going on for decades and decades. And so it's really diving in to telling the story of what's been happening there and how it's changed over the years. And it's really got something for everybody because it's not it's not just about a bunch of gay men. And I was really surprised to learn the history there. And I don't want to give any spoilers about right. that. I want people to come out and see it. So, yes, uh, yes. and we have, uh, my favorite part of this is really highlighting the local films. Yeah. Um, that's always my favorite part. We have a, a section of local shorts and we have some features from local filmmakers. And that's really exciting to me because I think Utah is just full of so much talent. And so I'm really excited to showcase our local talent that we have here in Utah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a very exciting event. Um, and like you said, a great opportunity to showcase local talent, to showcase queer talent, and to do so through film. You know, I think that's very powerful. And I believe a lot in the power of storytelling, which, you know, is, is, is kind of what films do. You mentioned, um, Kat, the, the theme, which is Halloween. It's right around Halloween. Um, how do the flex kind of ref uh, how do the film sorry reflect this theme? I know there's a late night uh, block of dystopian films, so kind of how how does it all kind of tie into the into the theme? We do. We so we we put aside some local Halloween short films, which is Amphibian, Beach Log Kills, Future Flowers, Pike, Safety State, and Willa Justice Drag Queen. And so if you're if you're itching to see some really fun dystopian films, we've yes. got that covered. Come see that. It's going to be a blast. Um, another fun thing we're doing this year 
is before several of the films, we're showcasing local talents. So spoken word, we're going to have um, a, a drag performer kick us off, and we're also going to have some local music. So before several of the films, I think that's a really fun thing we're doing this year. So it's not just going to be storytelling through films, but also through local spoken word and music. So it's gonna be just something for everyone. We also have films from Italy, from Greece, out of Argentina. We have we're showcasing showcasing films from all around the world. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of think of this as like your queer Sundance. I mean, right. really, yes. it's really something for everybody. There really is something for everyone, and I love that element of that added, um, uh, you know, that added element before the films where where you're, you'll showcase some spoken word, you'll showcase some music, and people can kind of come together before the film, and it's not like you said, just the film screening, and then everybody's kind of just leaving. You know, there's kind of more more interactive piece there. Um, Kat, I want to get into, you mentioned at the beginning, the film selection process and the programming committee, because I know that's kind of at the core of, of how these films were selected. Tell me a little bit about that process and how that all came to be. Yeah, it was really important to Russell and I this year that we had a diverse committee, that it wasn't just the same. I've been on the programming committee for six years now, yeah. and I absolutely love this process. And I really love that we had a very diverse committee made up of everyone. It was important to have non-binary voices on this committee. It was important for us to have people of color on this committee. It was important for us to have an older generation, a younger generation, have everybody coming together to make up these voices because it's a very hard process. Yes. And we know we're not always gonna please everybody, but it's important. And last minute, we had somebody speak up and say, hey, I noticed that this film wasn't selected and it's really important to me for these reasons. And you know what? We made sure that film got screened because that person's voice was very important in the selection process and the points that they made, we heard them. And right. so it, it's, it's an important process, this, and it, it takes, we start planning, nine, 10 months in advance. And wow. this process takes, it's a lot to consider. And every person on this team means so much to me and I love working with them. And I just want to give a shout out to the team because they're wonderful. Yeah, shout out to the, th to the team. I can't imagine all the hours that they put into kind of screening through all the films, watching the films, you know, then considering which ones are going to make the cut, which ones are not. But I think you speak a lot to the importance of representation, right? And the importance of having a diverse group and having um, a diverse uh, voices that can kind of speak to the different films. And, and that way you kind of have a very diverse selection of films. So I think that's very, very important. It is, it is really important. And this year, another thing we're doing different is we have youth programming. Okay. And I, I mean, for having a queer family myself, and it's important that we have that programming for youth. Yes. And we have something that you can bring your kids to and have them enjoy it. Um, we, one of our sponsors is Lucero, and the things that they're doing in the community for youth is incredible right. and and so that was really important to us that we had something for teens something that teens can come and enjoy and watch and so we made sure to specifically program something for youth this year and that's i think a really big deal that yes. you can bring your family and enjoy it it's not just you know all r-rated films are all something for older generations um but we do have that as well we have a section for elder queers and there really truly is something for everyone at this film festival. I love that. I love that anyone from youth to elderly can all enjoy, and the entire family can enjoy some of these films. Kat, we're talking all about the festival, but I know that's kind of later in the fall, but I also know that you all have another event coming up sooner, uh, later this summer, so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we're really excited. So Liberty Park, we have, you know, our films every Friday. It's free, you can bring the family, it's incredible. August 9th is dedicated to our queer film festival and we're really excited. Everybody's talking about Jamie. I will be there, Russell will be there. And it is a family-friendly queer film, super fun, out of the UK. It was based on a true story. It's a musical and I've watched it. It's fun, it's not cheesy. <laughs> and you can come, you can bring a blanket and you know have there's snacks there. I think Sweet Hazel will be there with their treats. And you can come and, and it's something fun for the whole family. And I love that it's free, it's community driven. I love having you know affordable things for the family in the summertime. Yes. And just something new and different. 
And so we'll be there and I hope to see people there and out, out there enjoying themselves. But it's a really darling film, like just really fun, sassy. And I think something that the whole family can enjoy, which I personally love. So Absolutely. And I also, I've, I always say that like um, outdoor films just, just kind of hit different, you know, being, being outside, being right. with the family on a summer night, it's just a, a really cool environment. I, th I think it's so fun. We have a projector that we can project outside yes. and my kids have loved anytime we can do things outdoors. I feel like it's just nice. And with these hot summer days, I feel like being outside at night, it's just lovely once that sun goes down, you know. It is. Well, folks, there you have it. You have that opportunity. August 9th, if you want to come check out the film before the film festival, which I kind of want to jump back into, Kat, and tell me a little bit about where can folks go to learn more? Where can they purchase tickets? And tell me a little bit about the pay what you can model, which I think is, is really yes. important in making this accessible uh to everyone. Absolutely. And that's really important to us. We want this accessible for everybody. I mean, that is, that's the biggest thing for us is that we don't want to turn anybody away. So we do have a pay as you can model. Right now, we've extended our, you can buy the pass for the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. It's really affordable. Um, you, we have a discount code. I think it's like Pride 10 or something like that. You can get the entire weekend for really cheap right now. We've extended that till July 28th. But also, I want people to understand that we're not going to turn people away. <laughs> so we really want you there. Um, so we, we hope that we, you understand that. We want you there. Pay as you go. Um, we're not going to turn folks away. Um, and then our website, you have that. Um, yes. I, yes. So talk <laughs> to us about our website. That is utahfilmcenter.org. That's where you can purchase the tickets and the passes that Kat mentions to us for the Utah Queer Film Festival happening October 25th through the 27th at the Rose Wagner Performing Arts Center. Right, uh, Kat? Yes, that is where you find us. And then we're on social media. So come see yes. us on social media. Follow us on Instagram. Um, it's UtahQFF on Instagram. We'd love to see you like engaging with us. We have all sorts of fun things we're going to be announcing all summer long. Love it. Um, and so, and I mean, we just want to see you there and we're going to have a damn these heels lounge. So, you know, for those of you that are like, oh, you changed your name. Don't worry. We're <laughs> going to have a lounge. You can come hang out with us. And we're just so excited and you can dress up where I'm going to dress up so you can dress up for Halloween. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so much fun. Lots of exciting stuff happening at the Utah Film Center and the Utah Queer Film Festival later this fall. Make sure once again to visit utahfilmcenter.org for all the information and to purchase your tickets. Kat, thank you so much for speaking with us about this, and we look forward to seeing you in the fall. Thank you so much. We are going to take a short break, but we'll be back with more of the show right after this. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Celebrity chef Gabby is going to give us some great information on backyard barbecue tips. And it's especially important that you're keeping everyone safe and you're making delicious recipes. So let's hear what she's cooking. Now I'm very excited about this interview because anyone that knows me knows I am not the best at cooking and or grilling. And I get to speak with someone that I have coined the grilling queen, New York Times bestselling author, Gabby Dalkin and Stephen Halston, the dairy expert at Tillamook. How are you guys doing? We're so good. How are you? Yeah. I am doing so well. And it's so funny because, Gabby, we talk about this quite frequently on the show. I am not the best cook. And grilling this summer with my family, <laughs> when I visit them in Michigan, the men wouldn't even let me try because they didn't think I do a good job. So I am stoked to talk to the grilling queen. That's what I call you now. <laughs> I am so excited to hear all of you. Yes, I will take. I will happily take that title and you can kick them to the curb next time you see it. So here's the deal with grilling. When you are, it's, a, it's essentially the same as cooking inside. It's really heat, time, and the food. So once you master that and you get a little comfortable with that, it's the same as cooking inside on your stove or even on your air fryer or something like that. You can really lean into doing the grill. Awesome. I also am a fan of not overcomplicating over everything. So you need a good pair of tongs, a digital thermometer, and just like great quality ingredients. And you are halfway to becoming a grill master. I feel like I am going to get your book. I am going to practice and I am going to make you proud. I will put things on Instagram <laughs> and show. <laughs> and those cheeseburgers, by I the way, I will send you, guys, you the book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those cheeseburgers look pretty amazing. I'm, uh, yeah, I want to hear about how you got into grilling, but can I ask you that first and foremost? How did that become one of your passions? 
Sure. So I used to be a private chef a hundred years ago before I went full time with Wet's Gobby Cooking. And I would grill. Grilling, I feel like, is a really easy way to put a lot of food out very quickly. And you're just using really incredible ingredients and then putting them over some hot flames and letting them go. So that's kind of how I started. And I never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And Stephen, I also have to say to you, I am a big fan of Tillamook. Like, the ice cream is my favorite. I just had to throw that in there before we get going. <laughs> I love it. I'm a <laughs> Thank big... you. No, I agree. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> we have, yeah, I love it. I have a lot of it. I'm not going to tell you how much, but there's a lot in my freezer right now. So guys, what are we going to talk about today we as far you. as grilling? What is the book? I mean, obviously I know what grilling is, but what are the your favorite parts of the book that you just wrote? Oh my gosh. I love the whole book. That's like asking someone to pick a favorite child. I, I feel it's like cooking question. with high quality ingredients is it, it is, is. It is yeah. loaded, but the high quality ingredients is a really nice place to start. That's key. And you don't actually have to be a grill master to, to be really great at the grill and to wow people. It comes with starting with the best ingredients because you start with that, you're going to get the best flavor. Right now, a good example um, is Gabi's spicy Diavolo Soprasada pizza that you put right on the grill. We have Ooh. crushed green olives, spicy Soprasada, and Tillamook's creamy, melty, whole milk mozzarella shred. Mm. Um, and it's really good. And you're going to wow people even if you're not a grill master. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to try that. Maybe that will be my first thing that I try. I mean, but you say it's easy. Are we, we're being honest here. It's not going to be that difficult. As far as grilling pizza goes, yes, it, it can be really easy. You just have to set up like a proper prep schedule. But okay. if you want to FaceTime me when you're doing this, I will happily walk you through that. <laughs> I would not say that to me because you know, I will, I really will. I'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I'm here to help. You can do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. But like these, for example, these burgers are super easy. Like these are not complicated. You don't have to worry about any kind of dough or anything like this. This is a oh. juicy smashed butter burger, which I feel like is actually a great entry into grilling. Okay. We are quite literally grating Tillamook extra creamy butter into the meat mixture and then forming them into a patty and putting them right on a griddle or a grill. And then, of course, we're obviously topping this with Tillamook's famous extra sharp farm style cheddar slices. So oh. it is like the juiciest bite <laughs> ever in your entire world. You will make these and you will blow everyone's yeah, mind just... at your at your grill out. <laughs> okay. I feel like, first of all, you're making me very hungry. Did you hear me kind of just like in the background? <laughs> that look, I know what I'm having for lunch today. Well, <laughs> yeah. I won't grill it. I'll go buy one and then I'll try to do this. But that looks brilliant and <laughs> it looks pretty easy to do. So I'm stoked about that. Just a couple ingredients. I, I feel like I could handle that. Totally. Yeah, and you can find these recipes if you want to do it yourself. We have them at Tillamook.com. You can follow uh, Tillamook and Gabby on social media. And, okay. uh, and if all else fails, it's National Ice Cream Month, so just buy yourself a carton of Tillamook <laughs> ice cream and you're, like, good to go. There you, you go. You guys, we're really on the same wavelength because I've been talking about National Ice Cream Month. <laughs> all, so I'll be like, listen, my friends told me that, look, I, I'll just uh, put it out nicely. I'll put it in nice little dishes and make it look amazing. <laughs> no, I heard that you guys have Absolutely. A, yeah. <laughs> I heard you guys have a dessert. And I've never heard about grilling a dessert. What is that all about? So your grill essentially acts as a as an oven. So this is the sticker doodle pizuki. The recipe is in my cookbook and on Tillamook.com and obviously the Tillamook vanilla beans on top. It is so good. Oh, wow. Okay. And so <laughs> we can see both the recipe, like you said, in your cookbook and also online. Yes, Absolutely. it is. Thank you so yeah. much for having us. Of yeah, course. thanks for talking with us. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. And I am going to be grilling up soon. I'll send you pictures. Hopefully it turns out well. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Have a great day, guys. Joyce Brewer of MommyTalkShow.com has some great tips and tricks on how you can keep those kiddos busy for the remainder of the summer. So let's introduce you to Joyce Brewer. Hi, I'm Joyce Brewer, the creator and host of MommyTalkShow.com. I love to share parenting news and information with parents about travel and all things fun. So if you're starting to feel like summer is slipping away from you, don't worry, we've got you covered. One of the things I love to share with my Mommy Talk Show viewers is how my family has been traveling this summer. For the first time in 15 years, my husband and I took a child-free trip. It was amazing. Our son has gone to two sleepaway camps that he's loved. And you can still make memories too if you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't have time before school starts. 
we have got you covered. One of the best ways to make memories and have a great time is over a delicious family meal. Bush's baked beans make summer menus even more fun. Whether you're firing up the grill for a backyard barbecue, packing a picnic for the park, or hosting a festive gathering with friends and family, Bush's baked beans bring the flavor and fun to summertime occasions. They're the perfect pairing, whether you're serving hot dogs and hamburgers or other family faves, the sweet taste blends together perfectly, enhancing each dish and making it complete. From the original to zero sugar added, Bush's has a variety of flavors. Now, if you want to plan a family vacation, it's an easy way to create memories. I love Decameron All-Inclusive Resorts, a partner of Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. They have one-of-a-kind hotels at great price points and tropical paradises like Jamaica, Panama, and Mexico. Think all-inclusive resorts with stunning beaches, expansive pools, diverse dining options that even picky eaters will love, daily fun for your kids, and lively evening entertainment. Best of all, they're running a great promotion now to get up to 40% off your next day. Head over to WyndhamHotels.com slash Decameron for all the details. Now let's talk about fun tech. If your children love gaming and music, this is exactly what they want. The Roku smart light strips are perfect for setting the mood and adding color to any space this summer with 16 million colors, voice control, effortless scheduling, music sync, and compatibility with Roku, Roku Voice, Alexa, and Google Home. They are ideal for your smart home. You can find them on Amazon. They're $17 off during Amazon Prime Days. Plus, find more great Roku deals, including products as low as $15 and discounts as high as $400 off. Visit Amazon.com slash Roku for these amazing Prime Day offers. And for all of this information on making a memorable summer, visit TipsOnTV.com. We want to thank you so much for tuning into your Friday edition of Wasatch Weekends. We love getting to be here to bring you all of this great information. Now, I hope that you're inspired to do some backyard barbecuing. You've marked your calendar for the Utah Queer Film Festival. And you've got all the great tips and tricks to keep your kiddos entertained for the remainder of the summer. Make sure that you tune in tomorrow for your Saturday edition of Wasatch Weekends. I've been your host, Maddie Evans, and I'll see you then.